Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Tyranny with me, Bring It On. As last episode, I did give Eb the wrong spell. I gave her Freezing Grip, which is the on-hit buff you can apply to allies. I meant to give her Path of Frost, so I fixed that off camera. But now we have a big fight with the Bane coming up, so let's get our pre-battle buffs applied. Then we'll engage with Barrick and then apply our standard battle buffs. Alright, charge into no the fray, Barrett. Spectral Blur, Mirror Image, same for Ebb. I'd have it no other way. Alright, good. Uh, taunt for me, Barrick. <laughs> Let's drop one of these back here. Uh, Lancer, I'm going to move you forward a smidge. So you can apply. Revel Mines on all these guys. I should probably put Haste on Barrack first. I think this is fine. Alright, the Striking Iron, I guess we'll hit... Well, it's all 63%, so I guess this guy. <laughs> then we'll Grave Strike these three. Then we'll move land tree over here and hit everybody with Surge of Glory. We're going to put Undying down for the damage buff. We don't necessarily need the regeneration, though Barrett could probably use it right now. Uh, Arcane Missile, all these guys in the front row. Alright, Surge of Glory is done. Healing Aura on Barrett. Uh, we'll move forward and use Tyrannus' Light on all the... Red Bane. Hang in there, Barrick. Uh, heal yourself up, actually. I will aid you. Easy experience. Look at all these ones. He's hardly taking any damage. Alright, and then we'll Sunder this guy. Uh, Lantry, you should be casting spells. Haste Barrick for me. Go ahead and fireball these guys. Probably finish them off right now. Alright, to the back line. This is not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Let's go ahead and thrust this guy. In fact, I'm going to use one of her abilities. We'll use Light of the Grave, just because I want to. <laughs> we don't have it in her party very often, so I want to see what her abilities actually look like. I could put Vital Body on Barrick for the regen. Then Arcane Missile, this guy. Then Grave Strike. Gonna apply Will of Command once again. Move forward and use Unravel Minds on both of them as well. Where is it at? There it is. Alright, then Sunder this guy. Might be enough to finish him off. Uh, Barrick needs a little more healing. Will do. Alright, wasn't quite enough to finish him off. Uh, let's use Phantom Bolt on this guy. Focus one down at a time. Lantry should be casting spells. Or buffs. Surge of Glory. Uh, Barrett gonna use Grave Strike. Main character, Refuse Pain, and Ebb. Arcane Missile. Raven Ash protects. Oh. Uh, healing Wisp to the front line there, Lantry. You know Actually, use Path of Fro uh, no. Just keep uh, Arcane Missile. Then Grave Grasp. He's already paralyzed, but... Can't hurt to have a little more. Lantry, Mirror Image. Ebb, uh, Grave Strike. Uh, 
And it should just be a matter of cutting them down. It's taking a little longer than it probably should. Fireball. I'll take you oh, don't need it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Two potions of elemental barrier, two bane essence, plus seven armor arcane stolen for 120 seconds. Beast blood pollen. Drowsy drop. Sleep for 35.4 seconds. Potion protection and a damaged metal. Bent and corroded, this bronze metal appears to have borne the brunt of a spear thrust. Depicting the icon of Northern Leaper, an animal that can't walk backwards. This particular metal is the Valiant Crest, a distinction awarded to the soldiers that volunteer in the first to be in the first row of the first charge of a battle and live to see the end of the fight. And sell it to a merchant. Can't do that. Make sure there's no secrets around before I grab the blade. Alright, let's see what this is all about. Cool, it's already masterworks, so I don't have to waste resources upgrading it. Oh man, it's one handed. Definitely thought it was going to be a two handed weapon. I also think that the name Dauntless would be better for like a shield or armor. Not necessarily a sword. Alright, so resolute, a weapon crit, foe AoE, days for 11.8 seconds, radius 2 meters. Artifact ability, stalwart surge. Raise the Dauntless high, releasing a wave of energy to stun all nearby enemies. Damage increases with the Dauntless's renown. So even I think that'd be a good shield ability, as opposed to a blade. Have it like a cone in front of the the wielder. Eh, whatever. This legendary sword was the badge of office for the champion of Stalwart. So many warriors brought Dauntless to battle over the centuries, that the presence of the wielder was often less notable than that of the sword itself, which steered the hopes of Stalwart's armies toward victory. Even in instances when a champion lacked the people's confidence, Dauntless made up for the shortcomings by delivering on the promise of victory. The sword's most notable feat of recent memory took place during the Battle of Quelling Field in 398 TR. A free city's army advanced on Stalwart's farmlands and nearly won the day. When Dauntless was unsheathed, the defending soldiers broke out in patriotic cheer. This abrupt change of attitude so rattled the free city's mercenaries that they assumed their fortunes had changed and the Stalwart had gained a second win in the battle. It was only days after the, their panicked retreat that they learned of their error. Consequently, the cultural significance of this blade cannot be underestimated. As your hand touches the hilt of the sword, a rush of sensation courses up your arms as if you had dunked them in warm water. The feeling is at once calming and overwhelming, and leaves you breathless. Dauntless. I saw that blade carve up too many friends during the Stalwart campaign. The locals rallied around it, sang anthems when it was drawn. It's every bit as meaningful to the Unbroken as Sentinel Stand. I've seen plenty of decorative copies of my time. This is genuine. The vein would not have gathered around a mundane imitation. It's the real Dauntless. Definitely snatching a quill and parchment, Mantra begins to sketch the sword. You need to hold on to it, for posterity's sake, naturally. As you grow accustomed to the sword's weight, your thoughts are drowned out by a perpetual buzz of voices. Fragments of inspiring speeches, glorious battle cries, in anticipation of triumph to come. The feeling subsides as quickly as it struck. Dauntless pulses in your hand, its potential desperate for release. Your perspective is divided between holding a sword and holding a living symbol. The distinction, at times, grows hazy. Well, if it's one-handed, I'm not going to use it anyway. I'm going to give that to... I guess Barrick. Yeah, straight up better DPS accuracy and recovery. This will serve me well. And if he's also taunting all the enemies, they're gonna gather around him, so that ability. Let's see what the AoE on it is. I mean it's pretty generous regardless. But yeah, I think that's best on on Barrick. Alright, cool. We're gonna head back to the spire because our hopefully our next item is done being forged. We can start the next one. Then we'll come back down here to the Old Walls Breach. Just take it one step at a time.
We have a quite a few artifacts on hand. Commander's Plate, Binding of Shadows, Dauntless now, and then the Alchemist Gloves, which I need to upgrade. On it. First things first, let's do some mercantiling. I'll take your hide, your bronze ingots. I should probably just buy all this every time I see him. Oh, it's a little pricey, isn't it? You can't afford all that. All right, so let's get rid of the scrolls and alchemist supply then, or alchemy supplies. Is that what's most expensive? No, they're all the same price. Whoops. Right. Sorry, we can make some more money off of Kenrick up here. Not a lot, though. I guess we weren't gone that long. Alright, let's go ahead and sell that weapon that we picked up. to the Sunset Spire. I think I was making that dagger for Beric, wasn't I? So I guess I don't need that anymore, now that we have Dauntless. Oh, it's not even done. Wait, did I not start it? Nope, it's still in pro progress. Okay. Well, that's kind of lame. I think I'm going to rest then. We'll go back to the Mountain Spire and take a nap. Oh, I should have tried to forge them, but I need to go back and try and forge the... Uh, upgrade the Alchemist Gloves. So let's go back there and take care of that. Luckily, it only takes 15 minutes between the two. Yes. All right, so what does it improve? Precision goes up by 1%. Unarmed damage goes up, and that's, I guess that's it. Is it even worth doing? That's great, let's go do it. Just upgrade it all the way. Oh, I don't have enough hide. That takes four. We're missing one hide. <laughs> okay. Well, we tried. What if this finished? Nope. All right. To the old walls. Let's stop by the mountain spire and rest. Then we'll go to the old walls breach. Let's see if we can't claim another spire. Breach. Scouts have recently confirmed the presence of an opening leading into the old walls at this location. The immediate area is likely dangerous, given the high risk of bane infestation. The breach is not far from the site where the unbroken regent, Epistrados, famously clashed with his favored forces at the close of the war. Encounter in Vendrian's Will. The day's journey is trying, owing to uneven terrain and dusty conditions. You reach a bend in the path and spy a small clearing off to the side. Several small rodents skitter away as you approach. At the edge of the clearing, you see a familiar sight. Leafy vines coiling around tree trunks. So this is the same... Same encounter, but they changed the description of it. So as before, hundreds of thin yellowish-green stems sprout from the vine. A collection of stiff bristles and elongated hairs, each with a cluster of bright orange berries. 
To memory, you don't notice any significant difference between these plants and the ones you encountered previously. We should still be cautious, so attempt more. Yeah, we've already read this. Examine the berries. Examine the vine's leaves. Oh, we already did that. I can't rub them. Yeah, rub them against my skin first. Then eat the berries. Uh-oh. These aren't the right berries. An, an hour later, you feel a disconcerting tightness in your intestines. One that escalates in intensity with each step. Your stomach churns, and the pressure in your belly intensifies. You got seemingly trying to coil into knots. As a cold chill washes over your body, you recall the small rodents bounding away in the clearing. Their droppings must have contaminated the berries. An astute guess on your part, but one made far too late. Beads of sweat coalesce along your brow, and your intestines begin to burn. The pain is intolerable. You barely enough time to depart the road and duck behind a tree before you empty your innards in an opposite direction simultaneously. I coating the nearby trees and shrubs in a violent, bloody, and seemingly unending spray. The stench alone makes you vomit again, forcing you into an unfortunate cycle of nausea, release, and repeat. Dysentery. Being reduced under 75-50 and 25% health percentage will cause a long interrupt. A half hour later, you find yourself splayed out on the dirt floor, panting and heaving. The cold sweat is broken, and the pain in your abdomen has subsided for now. You drink deeply from your water skin, exhausted and trembling. You stumble back to the road, grit your teeth, and continue on towards your destination. I'm the only one that was affected. The rest of my party didn't partake in the berries. I mean, good for them, I guess, but... Weird that I didn't share. All right, what do we have up here? Ah, got it. Iron greaves. Can't do that. Purple quality iron greaves at that. I think Gregos is up here. Merchant's boots. Might be something for Barrack to, or not Barrack, uh, Lantry to equip. Better deflection and disengagement defense. Let's go ahead and slap those on. Tines of bedrock dot the landscape, providing little shelter from the constant winds. So they look like unbroken. Alright, something else to explore here. Let's go talk to Gregos. At attention, a band of unbroken warriors rouse into position as your leader stands alert at, to your presence. So, Stalwart Captain whistles a shrill note as you approach. And his comrades lurch to attention. He turns to regard you with open distaste. Tuck your tail and scamper back the way you came. The unbroken won't tolerate northern scum getting in our way. I'm here for the steadfast insignia. Stand aside or perish. Mattias didn't entrust us with this mission so that we could hand over Stalwart's mightiest artifact to Kairos' henchmen. Attack positions. Stand your ground. Alright, we are in combat. Oh yeah, so I got Corrosive Aura from Wrath with the Unbroken. So it's a permanent uh, aura. Minus two armor stolen for three seconds from all enemies. And then Withering Touch. Uh, foe target versus Endurance. Weakened Affliction for 35.4 seconds. Then Stun Affliction for 7.1 seconds. And by all enemies, I mean in a radius of three meters. So all immediate enemies. Let's get those two back. Send me your and let's drop our buffs. Uh, we need to get these out first. I thought about buffing before I got too close to him, but oh well. <laughs> we'll adapt. I was Go ahead and taunt Beric. Alright, will of command. What do we have here? Let's do fireball. Lantry, grid of renewal. 
you can. Uh, Surge of Glory. Arcane Missile. Uh, we're not done buffing up there. Fuse Pain. And we're gonna drop False Pit on this guy that's coming to the back to pick a fight with Ebb. So I'll appreciate that. We use Grave Strike on all the enemies and. I'm enjoying this a bit too much. As you command. up here and use Unraveled Minds with a lot of them. In fact, my main character can even drop. Where's it at? See, Withering Touch only focuses one. Uh, drain Strength on these three. Can't do that. Alright, Path of Frost. Very good. Use striking iron on this guy. Might be able to finish him off. Let's sunder the guy in the back. Let's see. Yeah, we'll use. What is that called? Electric jolts. Uh, Lantry. Haste barrack for me. I'll take care. And then healing R on Barrack as well. I gotta thrust this on guy. It. Move up here and use Tyrannus' light. Cool. And Lantry leveled up. Uh, reapply your buff. I'm afraid. We'll go ahead and cleave. Uh, we only hit the one. Let's circle around. I just attack this guy, I guess. Whatever it takes to take him out. You can put Vital Body on Beric. Then you can use Phantom Bolt on this guy. No problem. Then Grave Grasp should paralyze him. Then I'll thrust him with my main character. And that should be it. He's paralyzed. He doesn't have much of a chance to fight back here. Alright. Yes. Easy fight. But they just teleport me over there? Harunimus. Am I next? The sage points his quill at the unbroken corpses, biting his lip as he finishes the final scribblings of a note. I was not trying to eavesdrop on your scuffle, but now that I've witnessed it, duty, duty obliges that I record it. He rolls a sheet of parchment into a thick tube in his hands. Come and silence the record if you must, but I warn you, the sages have long written memories. No need for concern. I'm only here to kill Unbroken. Oh, I see. A little too nationalistic for my tastes, but they were a decent travel company at least. He scans the corpses again in size. They call Kairos' forces uncompromising, but at times I wonder if it isn't the other way around. And how may this humble servant of letters be of assistance? He runs his fingers through his hair, resting his quill behind his ear. I understand that we both seek items within yonder old walls. Uh, what are sages doing here with the Unbroken? Let us say we are sympathetic to each other's causes. He clears his throat. It also helps that we're both interested in the Arcana of yesteryear. The region artifacts are supposed to be fascinating specimens. No sage would, in good conscience, refuse an opportunity for study. Uh, tell me about yourself. I'm Hieronymus, or Hieronymus, a journeyman of the School of Ink and Quill. I scribed under Graver's cane, Crane or Gaber's Crane, jeez, and seventeen tomes are bounded by my hand. He coughs, his gaze at his feet. Other details are just vanity. I am more accustomed to studying with others than extolling my own facts. I'm looking for the steadfast insignia. Tell me what you know. Artifacts are fascinating business, are they not? In Star Wars decorated military history yielded so much intrigue around them. The steadfast insignia was prominently displayed in every unbroken battle where Regent As Aspisad fought. I hate that name. <laughs> Over the years it became something of a rallying marker, and its presence alone accounted for many notable victories. Hieronymus, or Hieronymus, uh, shakes his head with a sigh, gesturing toward the massive stone horizon of the old walls. It lies within, but no good discovery is without its pitfalls. He points toward a wide breach in a nearby section of the ancient stone facade. 
Then Broken and I were attempting to recover a few relics of interest from the old walls. But a swarm of scourge scourges put a halt to that plan. You do, see, you do see those risks from time to time. When I was training at the library, a senior scribe told me to clear the rats out of the cellar. Some of them accursed things had nodded up their tails and... He trails off, shuddering. Let's just say what happened here was almost as bad. We recovered a torch key during our ill-fated first attempt to breach the old walls. I have seen fashion stones like it before, but we don't know about them would fill a library. Hieronymus uh, points the shaky finger. Unfortunately, when we were attacked, we got separated from Gregus's men, and one of the soldiers still has the torch key. His corpse does, to be exact. Oh, where's the soldier's body? Just south, just southeast of the breach. Take care. Those beasts may still be on the hunt. And what does this torch key do? It appears to be part of a lock and key system within the old walls. If only we could replicate such crafts on as grand a scale as the builders of this place. He shakes himself from his reverie. In any event, you'll need the torch key if you want to scour the ruins below. And what are the next steps? Once you get the torch key, you'll be able to venture past the first chamber. He pauses for a moment. Of course, given our aborted efforts, you can understand why I'd be hesitant to re-enter the old walls. My scribe Javala didn't survive the trip. The poor girl. Alright, so any questions you have, that you're apt to tell me more of interest than the other way around, I'm sure. And what are you seeking in the old walls? My research suggests that within these nearby old walls are a set of stones carved with ancient script. For lack of a better term, I call them stones of elucidation. His hand darts to his satchel, producing a hand-drawn sketch of an ordinary circle. I know the sketch doesn't capture the wonder, the wonder, and frankly, we don't really know what they do. We found spheres of identical size, but differing glyphs in over a dozen disparate regions of the old walls. As we find more of these stones, we can compare com commonalities and sigils. With a large enough collection to study, we hope to crack the language of the old walls. Who can guess what we might learn from, uh, from, learn then, sorry, not learn from them. Hieronymus blushes. It's been a slow process. Constructing dead languages without living witnesses is singularly frustrating. It's a tall request, but I doubt Tunon selects fools for fate binders. I could use someone with your metal to brave the old walls. And what's in it for me? For you? He looks askance, his chin resting an ink-stained hand. Yeah, fair mention in the Chronicles is reward enough. He looks at you blankly. That's... that's it? I thought you were going to shake me down for my last copper ring. He tilts his head to the side and looks you up and down. And I'll make it a point to modify the record. But help me out. Now I aggrandize your role by, in my telling of the deeds. I'll consider your request. The sage bows with a nod. That is all I can ex That is all I can expect. Jeez. Uh, what are the steadfast insignia? It's just a simple trinket to the untrained eye. But every first regent since before the Unbroken earned that name wore the badge into battle. Stalwart folk are ever famous for standing their ground, and the steadfast insignia embodies their immovable nature. The wearer can resist any charge, push, or shove. He smiles, pointing to the ground, where heavy footprints are visible under layers of rust and sand. The layers of rust let you judge the age of footprints here in the Blade Grave. And these tracks heading into the old walls date back to the opening days of Kairos's storm. What else can you read in rust patterns? Beric looks himself over self-consciously. My working hypothesis is that the only person with their feet on the ground during the peak of the storm would be the bearer of the steadfast insignia. Hieronymus aims his finger along the footprints in the rust until he's pointing at the old walls. I suppose we don't know for certain until we look. Uh, what can you tell me of the old walls? Hieronymus's eyes widen. I could speak volumes, honorable Fatebinder, but I will summarize. The old walls predated settlements of the tier or settlement of the tiers. The passageways, cri passageways crisscross the landscape, but most good folk steer clear. Kairos' laws forbid entry, which hasn't always been a problem for us, but even we saw the good sense to stay out. Explorers have found old artwork, funerary remains, and other relics of a civilization predating our own. Hieronymus lets out a long sigh as he looks at the towering wall behind him. The most find a quick death in the old walls, as the current inhabitants are inhuman uh, predators. Creatures of arcane power that appear to travel on, on the mists. Now what should I expect inside? The worst. He looks at you with a puzzled smile, his mouth moving in several half-starts. 
Now, the old walls are filled with arcane beasts that attack erratically, but with little warning. My colleagues can only speculate on what they are, or what possible sustenance, if any, they find in the old walls. That said, if you see one, it would be unwise to approach it and ask clarifying questions. Can you deliver a message for me? Not currently. His arm instinctively lifts up, his gloved hand raises slightly above his ear, arm crooked to create a landing surface for a bird. He looks skyward, blinking as he searches the clouds for several long moments. My Sunder Dove is carrying another missive at the moment. When she's returned, there may be room for her bindle for a note or two, or on her bindle for a note or two. Oh, uh, that's all. Farewell. Alright. Heavy leather boots. Can't do that. Sorry. We need to level up Lantry real fast. Let's take care of that. Yeah, keep pumping our resolve to increase the affliction duration of his abilities and. I guess we're counting of deeds. Lanchi orates the party's deeds, inspiring his allies and instilling terror in the hearts of enemies. So allied AoE plus 44% magic defense, endurance defense, and will defense for 20 seconds. And then foe AoE versus will, terrified affliction for 6.9 seconds. Doesn't last a super long time. Then my uh, item just finished. Not that I need it. It might be worth going back and starting the next project uh, before we enter the old walls. Can't do that. A massive stone door towers above you. Looks like this was the actual entrance to the old walls. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head back to the tower, or to the spire. Start our next project. Also loot these bodies before I forget. A broken shield and weeping wound. Two-handed. A gravelet, a weapon crit, foe target, 10.64 health drained. An unhealthy reddish light rides about the sword like infection. Driven into flesh, weeping wound, weeping wound could sap the life out of any creature and transfer it to the wielder. How's it compared to my current weapon? Better recovery time. Now my current weapon is a tier higher than my than this weapon. So if I upgrade this, it might be comparable. Not armor penetration wise, but otherwise. So let's go back to the spire real fast. So our next project at the forge. Hopefully don't hit any random encounters. Alright, there's these bravado. We're still not getting any bronze ingots from that one one recruit. Which is a darn shame. So I might give this to Verse. Since I, I don't need it for Barrack anymore. And then this, let's see how it compares when we upgrade it. Still less damage than my... Axe. And I don't necessarily need the on-hit lifesteal. Because we have Eb's ability that does that for us. So I'm going to go ahead and sell that, along with this stuff. Because I just don't need it. I didn't start my next project. <laughs> I just wanted my free stuff real fast.
Alright, let's sell this axe we picked up. Go start our next project at the forge, then we'll head back. Well, we'll head back next time. Not sure what I want to make next. I probably need to make something with uh, iron or bronze ingots since I don't have the the hide available for it. I'd like to make this or this, but we don't have enough hide for either one of those projects. Or for Headhunter. Well, that's bronze ingots. Can I make anything? Alright, make this sure for uh, skill greaves, so let's go and do that. So we have something ticking in the background. Am I forgetting anything here? I don't think so. Yeah, probably not going to use those boots. I prefer the attribute bonus right. that I get for my current boots. No one else can wear heavy boots, so. Rest up, then in the next episode we'll head back to the Old Walls Breach. I would go there off camera, but if I run across any random encounter, I want to showcase that, so we'll save that for the next time. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.